Hello. Today I thought we'd paint this lovely barn. Let me make sure you can see that. Not too complicated. Get a piece of paper or canvas. I got this square 20 by 20. I love opening a new canvas. And for this project, because this barn has all these nice greens and blues, I am gonna paint the background orange. You can mix an orange color. I'm using this nice, deep, kind of reddish orange. It gives you some nice undertones and some nice pop. It's called Torch Red. So it's actually red, but it looks like an orange. So I'm gonna cover the whole canvas. An orange to prep. And acrylic dries really fast. So if you do it nice and thin, it does not take that long to dry. And if you have a hair dryer handy, you can speed it up. The people who prefer not to paint with acrylics, most of them it is because they dry too fast. I keep a hair dryer in my studio because they don't dry fast enough. I think it's important to paint fast and with energy and movement and not overthink it. Because I think if we get stuck in our heads, in life in general, but especially in art, it shows up. Okay, now the orange is dry, but the background is pretty dry. Dry enough. So, let's lay out the barn. And I, I like to use, I don't know, white or a lighter color. I don't think it really matters. I'm gonna use this light blue. And don't be too, just relax, because you're gonna paint over this. So, I start with the roof. Just a little bit of an angle. I like big barn roof. But you can do it however you want. And don't make your line, don't worry about your lines being too perfect because I think having, you know, energetic and clearly hand done is more important than controlled and tight. You know what I mean? And I don't do the bottom because you can't see the bottom. I just do the sort of the outline. And then it looks like the grass comes to about there. And then the tree line somewhere in here. All right, and we'll do the shadows and whatnot later. So, next, let's do the sky. And so if you imagine the horizon is probably about right here, so that is farther away, and this part of the sky is closer. So the brighter blue is higher. Does that make sense? That always confuses me. But... Don't worry about it, because we're gonna paint it out. So I'm using my golden acrylics that I always use, and they're listed below in the description. And I'm using mostly blue, but I'm adding a touch of magenta and a touch of yellow to make some sky blue. And make it more toned down than you think, because we can always brighten it up. Mm -hmm. So I'm using a lot of white, Mostly blue and then a little pink and a little yellow to keep it from being too close to a pure hue. So what I'm going to do is start up here. And I don't, I still, I like it to have energy up here. I don't mind a little bit of the orange peeking through. I think it makes it interesting. I mean, not a ton. But what I'm going to do, do the blue all the way across the top and then add a little white as we get closer to the horizon line to make it have a little bit of depth. And we can see the orange is not fully dry. But that's okay. I think it's making it kind of interesting. Remember, the greatest thing about art is the rules are, there are no rules. 
So if you if something happens that you didn't expect, but you like it, then keep it. Do more of it. Some of the best, coolest art, I think, was truly an accident. And there's, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with intention, no. But I think play, having a good time, being creative, seeing sort of what that just happens, makes some of the most fun, interesting stuff out there. But I'm gonna just. And I think skies are really interesting because, you know, you can just sort of let them be different. There might be a storm over there. Might be a little clearer over here. It's in the right spot. Mm -hmm. So, and you can always come back and change your blue if you want it to be different. You know, it's a little too blue. I don't want the blue, I don't want this blue to be the strongest color in the whole painting. I want the barn to pop. All right. So now this is where I like the orange to come through. I think next I'm going to do mix a dark green. This is phthalo blue green, phthalo green blue shade, sorry. And these are the three that I use to make earth tones. These three are the ones I normally use during class, but I've thrown in phthalo green and naphthol red light, I believe. I will double check that. But see how you can make a nice dark earthy tone using these three. And it, the more neutral the color gets, meaning the more you put its complement in there, the more it's gonna recede and go into the background. I like to start down here with these, this line of trees. Oops, I almost put the wrong color. And I don't always mix them all the way because I think it's kind of interesting when one or another color shows through. I just mainly don't like when you using paint straight out of the tube. And I also like it when the colors kind of accidentally mix. So you see how that really goes back? And I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but I'm gonna do a slightly different, I don't know if you can see, mix. I'm gonna make this one a little even darker. See how it's almost a purple? And then I'm gonna add some yellow, just a little bit. So have fun with it, you know what I mean? Just do, and I don't know if it was my kindergarten teacher or that, who's that painter? They had the TV show, but somebody said, if you mess it up, dress it up, like work with it. If you get lemons, make lemonade. And I truly believe that. Because frustration is the number one killer of a good time in your studio. I'm gonna do a little bit of a very green highlight. Maybe the sun's shining on that a little bit. Okay, and we can also come back to this. But so now we've got our setting and the trees in there are not that dark. So we might have to go back in and add some. Next, I'm gonna do the side of the barn. So I'm gonna get a clean brush because this brush is really got a lot of paint on it. And I'm also gonna use a flat brush or an angled one would work. But I want this, I want the barn, because that's where the biggest highlight is. I want that to really pop forward. So I'm gonna use these warmer colors. Just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of blue. 
mostly yellow and a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of red. You see that? And then a ton of white. So I'm making a yellow, but it's toned down a little bit. It's not a pure hue, but it's very tinted with a lot of white because I want it to really pop. But this kind of like to almost paint it like in slats, you know what I mean? I don't know if it'll show, stay looking that way. I love a good old weathered barn. And I think, I don't know, I think a lot of people kind of connect with that. I read an article about this, I think it was like a grant organization or somehow it was a not-for-profit, but it was called Barn Again. Like B-A-R-N again. And it was if people had a plan to repurpose an old barn, they would give them money. So people were making bed and breakfast or even making their primary home. But I thought that was so cool because I think barns kind of represent a time, you know, a time gone by. It's like old gas stations. I feel like they're slowly going to be replaced and they have so much charm. And so we see how that kind of pops. Right now I'm going to use the orange in the roof and I like how it just kind of peeks through. I'm not sure why like, I do this. The barns are kind of the only one I do the orange background. So now we want to get, so you see you have this sky blue. You want to get a different temperature for the roof color. So I want it to be cooler. So let's see how this is kind of a, now temperature is relative. So it's just what it's right next to but I feel like the sky is on the warmer side. So I want it to have a little bit more of like a um, purple periwinkle kind of feel, just a touch so that it pops next to this background, next to this yellow, and next to this blue. So you wanna have kind of a push-pull and temperature, I believe, is one of the best ways to do that. So, new brush again. And this time, I think I'm going to use an angled brush. And I'm going to put a little more of the red. Not so much that it's actually purple. I just, like I just did. Oops. This phthalo blue is so, these have so much pigment. And you learn just practicing to have a little restraint. So I'm making kind of a like a very pale kind of just a little bit cooler than the sky you don't want to mix the same color because then it'll kind of blend into each other but we're gonna also let the orange keep them separate and I want to tint it meaning add white just a little bit more and I'm definitely gonna do this in like paint it in slats, which is why I use this angled brush. And I like to let a little bit of that red orange peek through. I should have done this lat halfway, but I didn't. I live. I like when it's imperfect because then it's clearly hand done. This is looking kind of way purple to me, but I'm going to come in with some orange and get, I love that rust, rust kind of seeping through. Look around at old buildings and watch how beautiful rust creeps on through. That orange makes every color pop. And orange, I mean, it's orange has never actually been my favorite color, but I am a fan of orange. My top, my favorite color, this is a serious question for me. When people ask me what my favorite color is, I don't know. Like when you're little, think about how important color is. You know, like you really identify with it. And I just kind of stuck with it. Turquoise, lilac, and periwinkle have been rotating for the last 30 so years. But I gotta say, 
orange is on my short list. Like a runner up maybe. What I'd like to know, I'd actually be interested to know because clearly you guys are interested in art. What is your favorite color? And has it always been the same thing? Because remember when you're little, when you're like, I got out of winter winter. You know, I don't know. Like you get, kids get really serious about it. And I think there's, you know, there's frequency to color. I had a red bedroom <laughs> when my husband was in grad school. We had a red bedroom and it was difficult to sleep in there. They, you know, they put horses before they go in a race. Sometimes they put them in red rooms because what red does to your, I don't know, your state. Okay. So we got some general slats here. Let's come back in with some orange. But yeah, it's coming together. So I'm gonna take this magenta and then mix it with some yellow. And I want it to be a toned down orange, like a rusty orange. So I'm not gonna make it too, too bright. And I made it green because that blue is so strong. So kind of play with your After you do this, if you have golden acrylics, if you have these three colors, see how many different oranges you can make and it's endless. It, it will blow your mind and they don't make mud. And just keep mixing different combinations of those three and you'll be able to make literally a million different oranges. Okay, so I like just a little bit of rust. Okay, that looks more red than I wanted it to. I don't know, let's see. I'm gonna put a little bit more yellow. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do it all the way. I'm just gonna kind of drag, let it hit in different spots. I think it's so hard to like exactly recreate rust, but I like, I like drying. And then maybe just every once in a while, I'm gonna have a lot of yellow. Cause I love, don't you love how rust will do that? Like it'll kind of morph. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm gonna flip the brush over. Don't, don't be too consistent, you know what I mean? Cause it might depend on like where the water hit it. I like that yellow, don't you? Okay, that got a little carried away. A little too much yellow. I don't know. You might be able to live with it. Keep stepping back. Now, I also want you to be nice to your painting. Because it is very easy to be like, Ugh, I don't like that. Ugh, I messed up. Uh, whatever. And I think it totally impacts your ability to create. So be discerning without being critical. Do you know what I mean? Like if you find something that you don't like, ask yourself, what does it need? Not what's wrong with it. Step back, like pretend like you were decorating a room or putting together an outfit. You would just adjust it. You wouldn't have to have Negative self-talk, right? Because I think it takes the fun out of it. Okay, we can return to the roof because I like the little yellow. I don't know. I might mix up a different orange and see what happens. And I might put a little more blue in the roof. But let's leave the roof for right now. Now, this is my favorite part. We're going to do the shadow that's underneath the roof. Along this line right here. And I imagine it looks like to me, this is a very hot sunny day. So I'm gonna make the shadow a nice blue color. So the temperature that, the color that's sort of underneath a shadow has to do with the temperature of the light that is casting the shadow. That's why on those Western paintings in the desert, the shadows are so blue. Your brain knows that's a really warm orange 
sunlight, that it's hot. And shadows are more purpley, cooler in the winter. Like a snow scene would have a more blue, purple cast to it. So we're gonna make this blue, which is gonna make it feel hot. I'm gonna get a new brush. I think I'm gonna get a smaller brush, but I'm still gonna use, I would use either a flat or an angled. Oh, I think I'm gonna use a flat. Don't you love a new brush? And, okay, so look at, let me show you this. Let me see if I can do this in focus. Look at the shadow right next to the color of the wall. I mean, that is a huge contrast. It's a pretty dark shadow. And then there are these fabulous little, I don't know what you call them, roof things. Maybe we, no, let's not do those first. Let's do the shadow. So we're gonna start with the kind of yellow color and then make it have a blue cast to it. So let's see, here's the yellow color. And I'm gonna add some blue, touch of red, touch of the yellow, because you don't want anything to be too pure hue. And you don't mess with it. Alrighty. So it's gonna kind of follow the roof line, which I don't think, I think because it's old, would be a little bit like crooked teeth, right? Oh, I thought you needed me. <laughs> But see how that shadow, and the shadow would be darker, closer to the underside of the roof. So I'm gonna add, phthalo blue is so good for shadows. I love it, love it. And I'm gonna teach you a trick that I love. So put that, put that super dark right underneath that roof line. See how that made it pop, isn't that fun? And shadow is so funny. People love shadows. If I paint a painting and it has a shadow and it'd be like, ooh, I love shadow. Because it makes it three-dimensional because your brain understands shadows. So these little roof things I think are kind of orange, kind of white. They kind of kind of roof colored. I'm mixing up just sort of a, a neutral kind of wood color. I don't know if you can see it. And these things are sticking out. They're pretty. You don't have to do these if you don't want to. So I'm doing them. And I got a little, a little highlight on them. They're catching a little light and they're gonna create a little extended. So go back to that shadow color. Cause they are going to make a little shadow off to the right. Uh, my teacher, I had this wonderful teacher growing up and she said, if you don't know where the light source is, make it upper left. And I don't know if that, that, what that is based on, but she got that in my head and I do it. Okay, now I'm gonna take some of this phthalo blue and I'm taking it straight out of the tube. I don't usually do this, but I'm just gonna do a little bit because I love it so much. And I'm just going to do a little bit here and there. Just to make it interesting. Okay, so one of my favorite artists, Wayne Tebow, who does all the desserts and stuff. He does like gumball machines. Look him up. I, I will put his name in the link. I'm pretty sure it's, it's either Dwayne or Wayne. All my art history teachers are going to die if I get it wrong. But anyway, T-H-I-E-B. Will you Google him? I think it's... Anyway, he paints these fabulous, well-lit items. And he has this little trick. He puts a little teeny hot flash of, like, bright yellow or orange right along the edge of a shadow. And it... it I don't know why, 
I'm sure there's some science behind it, but it makes that shadow pop like crazy. So get a little yellow and red. And it's just, you have to use a lot of restraint, but make a very hot, warm color. It is Wayne Tebow, T-H-I-E-B-A-U-D. Google him. He has fabulous paintings. I think he's still alive. I hope he is. If he's not, moment of silence. And just do a little bit of a hot yellow next, right where the shadow meets the lit object. Even a little red. And I love a little red to highlight somewhere. Okay, now the fun part. Let's do the grass in the front. Okay, so if you are painting along, if you're not, I'm glad you're here watching. But if you are painting along, I'd love if you could leave comments if you enjoyed this, if you thought it was too easy, too hard, or boring, or the most wonderful thing you've ever done, whatever, or what other items you guys would like to paint, I'd love to hear. So I'm gonna make a fairly bright green for the grass. And I'm using a flat brush. And I'm just gonna get in there and start doing it. And yeah, I kind of believe to paint the way an object goes, so I'm sort of just painting it like grass strokes. And so the grass in the back is going to be more neutral so that it kind of recedes more. The grass in the front, we're gonna make brighter so that it pops. The more neutral the color, the more it recedes. That's why these dark trees look like they're going back. And warmer temperatures tend to come forward more than cool temperatures. So we're gonna make the grass nice and warm and keep it, keep making your brush flat. So you can do, you know, so it looks like grass. But if you wanna do it some other way, do it your way. The rules are, there are no rules. Everything's an experiment. But I like to mix up one green and then change it up. You know what I mean? Because grass does that. Like I'm just adding more red and more yellow just to give it some variety like nature has. All right, and here's a question I was thinking about yesterday because I have been lately very interested in painting things from nature. How come it seems like everything in nature has these beautiful, um, graceful curves. You know, all the flower petals and the leaves building up to the flowers and the, just the graceful, the shapes, except for tree branches are like, tick, tick, tick. they're jiggy jaggy. What's that about? Does anybody know? There's probably a science reason. I don't know, but I was just thinking about it. And then my daughter said to me, and she's in art school, what if trees are actually the roots of the earth? Like, does that make sense upside down? Isn't that interesting to think about? Because they look like roots. And if they are getting air and whatever the earth needs from the atmosphere and taking it to the center of the earth, isn't that cool? So I'm mixing the green again. <gasps> did you see what I just did with the palette? I just made a gash in the background. But you know what? We're not gonna worry about that. I'm going to go in with my finger and smooch it out. Or maybe we'll say like a woodsman came through and did it. Just kidding. Okay, also please subscribe. I keep forgetting to say that. But my producer said, please, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe so other people can find it and paint because art is the best thing ever and everybody should be painting and having fun because it's so good for your brain. So keep, you know, mixing up different greens and then let it get a little brighter in the front. 
Not like on every single blade, but see how just having a little pop of yellow up front kind of brings your eye over here. Now, here's one of the things I think is hard, not overworking. So as long as you're having fun, I say keep going. But if you start to like get frustrated with something and you keep messing with it and like, you know what I mean? Like painting and more and more and more. Sometimes it's good to take a break. Step back and take a break. Fun is of the utmost importance. You should be, oh, I didn't get it on myself. Miracle. I just dropped the brush. And now there's gradu stuck to it. So anyway, and add some white. Keep at making it a little brighter, a little more neutral. I mean, less neutral for these front blades. And see how they kind of pop. So you want the more neutral, the more mixed grass to be in the back because it recedes and the brighter, lighter grass comes forward. But it's not gonna be totally um, what's the word? Like homogenous, do you know what I mean? There's gonna be, and the light's gonna hit it differently. So there's gonna be some dark blades up here. And the grass is gonna be a little bigger in the front. And there might be some browns and some. And don't ever mix it, cause I kinda, don't you like how the red kinda pops through? So, I hope you had fun. Keep doing all the grass you want. And please send us, if you want to, I'd love to see your barn. So take a picture of your setup, of who you're painting with. I love seeing what people are doing. And send your barn in, and then we'll maybe, I think we'll make a video of everybody's pictures and post that. Be kind of fun. But you know, um, and we'll put an email address in the description. But I'd love any feedback. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun.